August 9th this year, Kenyans went to the polls. Now, the good news is we have the results. Now, as a show that is all about women, we are keen to analyze the results that women in politics attained. Now, to help us break that down, I'm joined by a politician, stroke entrepreneur, and of course, the immediate aspirant member of parliament, Westlands constituency. I'm talking about Sylvia Mulama. Uh, this is the show, it's her standards, and my name is Quinta Mbori. Thank you for joining us yet again for your weekly dose of inspiration. What do you think, what do you feel about uh, the just concluded elections? You remember, you can talk to us at KTN Home across all socials. You can also talk to me at Quinta Mbori. You can also engage our producer, she's called Grace Waweru. We'd like to very much hear uh, your opinion regarding the just concluded uh, polls in Kenya, which were conducted on August 9th. Now, without much ado, allow me to welcome Sylvia. Karibu sana. Thank you, Quinta. Thank no. you for having me. Nice to meet you show. finally. Nice. And <laughs> congratulations. Thank you. Westlands yeah. constituency is uh, is huge. <laughs> yes, it's huge. It's yeah. uh, one of the most prestigious seats in the Member of Parliament seats. Yes. Uh, because Westlands uh, is one of the highest tax contributors mm -hmm. in the country. Mm -hmm. And uh, also it presents a lot of interest for the uh, business community. Mm -hmm. So it is indeed a prestigious seat. And... Uh, I'm happy and honored that I was able to woo the people of Westlands to the level that I did. Why did you choose Westlands? Because I'm a, a, a resident of Westlands. Resident of Westlands. Yes. Were you the only female aspirant for the same position? Not really. Yeah. I think we were about uh, four women, mm -hmm. but uh, actively on the ground was me and uh, uh, two of uh, uh, the other candidates. The other candidates. Yes. And how did that go, briefly? <laughs> <laughs> I know politicians, when they are given time, they will speak. Yes. How yes. yes. Um, it, it did. It, it went well. Uh, we had uh, a good platform to campaign. Um, as a woman, I felt comfortable in all my campaign. Uh, the, pr the whole process, it went very well. Yeah. We had good strategies. Uh, we would uh, a lot of people. Uh, we had started creating a good movement. Uh, the only thing I can say perhaps is that we probably started a little bit late uh, because um, I was initially la running for the women rep representative of Nairobi and uh, when uh, our party fell vacant of the seat in Westlands, I stepped back. So my campaigns actually in Westlands started rigorously in January, around January the 15th. So within the uh, almost eight months, we were able to do a lot, cover a lot of ground, uh, put out there a very good message that was resonating with a lot of people. Whatever happened on the day is in the past now. We leave it to God. But uh, it's my first time in politics. And I am uh, happy to say that it's just the first step in governance. And I'm sure that uh, I have more chances to go. So I'm not even retreating or going anywhere. Mm. I am in Westlands to stay. Mm. Yeah. What do you want to tell people of, of Westlands for not electing you? What are they going to miss out on? Uh, they are going to miss out on the uh, clear agenda and vision for Westlands that we had, particularly for the uh, community schools, which are the most deprived schools of our uh, community. They call them private, but they are not private. Uh, these schools are so, so deprived. We are going to miss out on the projects that I was going to spearhead for the women. It will be delayed. I mean, we'll have another chance, but it will be delayed for another five years. So these women, uh, I'm talking about thousands of women. When you step out of one of the wards like Kangemi today in the afternoon, today is Wednesday. Right now, if I step in there and say, I need a thousand women to turn up, show up. Why? Because they don't have employment. They don't have any uh, business or small enterprises to run or trades. They are literally sitting in the house waiting for any goodwill to come by so they can be able to feed their kids. Uh, some of them, of course, are out looking for uh, labor, lab, uh, sh short term uh, labor works and uh, within the communities of now the affluent part of Westlands. So those are the fundamentals of our community. And as me as a representative of the constituency, it was not about going to legislate site. It is about making sure that people have food on the table first. And how do you make sure that happens? Is to make sure that actually they are in form, some form of employment or they're in some form of trade where they can be able to earn money to make a living. 
So the dire situation is hunger. The second dire situation is kids who are not getting equitable education. We are creating a society that is going to be disenfranchised for the entire of their lives. Yeah. So Sylvia, would you do it again in the same party for the same position in the same constituency? Yes, Quinta. Mm. I would happily do it again. Uh, the journey was good. The journey was smooth. Uh, I was blessed to have very good people around me, including my family and friends. Yeah. And uh, the process we went through was very smooth. And even my competitors, we were civil about each other uh, in our campaigns. Uh, if I went somewhere and realized that my opponent was there, I would casually just walk away and let them do their thing and come back later. So we didn't have any sort of antagonism during the campaign period. Then also my party. Uh, I have a sound political party, ANC. I'm happy to be an ANC member. Um, we did what we could as a political party and uh, I would happily do it again because I don't have to rub anybody's shoulders to be what I want to be in ANC. That is the good thing about ANC. And then, uh, would I do it in Westlands? Yeah. Yes, because I'm, happily, I'm a happy resident of Westlands and the connection w between me and uh, the voters has really resonated and we have built a very good relationship, which I'm actually going to carry on, even though I'm not on a campaign trail. I'm going to carry on working with the people of Westlands within the next five years. On different area, in different areas, education, areas of uh, community development for mamas like me, and also youth who are completely disenfranchised. I will work with them in the capacity that I am, I am able to. So uh, yes, I will do it again. Yeah, do it again. We hope you will be able to. And just focus more and be prepared more perhaps for the things that we learned through the process, do them better, particularly on the elections day, how to prepare well for that day yes. so that we don't have uh, surprises. Mm. Yeah. You have five years. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. now just moving closer to uh, the recently concluded uh, general elections, we have a, a scorecard for women. Um, mm. We just want to look at some of the wins, the gains, the losses, mm. the lessons learned. I was looking at some of the stats from um, the elections, and uh, apparently, out of we have we had about 16,100 16, candidates, from which um, we had 26. Uh, we have 26 women member of parliament out of 290. Yes. Uh, and that was up from 23 in the in the yes, last yeah, general yeah, elections. Yeah, yes. And then, of course, one that everyone is talking about is the fact that. Now we have seven elected governors, governors. Uh -huh. and then we ha and uh, in 2017 we had three, yeah? three yeah, only. Yeah, yeah, only. Of course, we only. lost one. Yes, yeah, we lost yeah, one. Yeah. And then of course we have three female senate, female senators. Yes, among other uh, MCAs. MCAs. Yes, and of course we are We've anticipating to have more women in the nominated um, seats, seats well. right? Yeah, yeah. What? How would you? How would you? Um, rank this elect elect electoral process as far as uh, the political environment is for women politicians how would you how do you describe it uh, i would describe it as progressive mm. uh, first of all because uh, this is my first this was my first yeah. time to run. Mm. and uh, when i came in everybody said what has become of you politics i would never dream uh, but it wasn't as bad as i expected uh, first of all, we have so many non-governmental organizations, also NDI, Transparency International, they've all come together to support the cause of women in yeah. this country. Yeah. And they did a tremendous uh, job in ensuring that we got equipped training-wise, we got equipped on the unexpected, we got equipped on how to handle, you know, the campaign process all the way through. So that was very, very good, and I think that's why we had a, a huge number uh, of women turning up. Uh, then um, the second uh, thing that was good for the women is that uh, a lot of women also stepped forward uh, because we've been called flower girls for a long time. And I think we say that title must fade away and fade as far away as possible. So many women joined in from the corporate world, um, we were all meeting in different uh, functions and fraternities and we were able to interact and realize that we were all
fighting for one goal, mm -hmm. a goal of being included at the table. Because most decisions that, that are taken without yeah. women, we have shortcomings with those decisions. And uh, I am happy in Kenya Kwanzaa that the president-elect, uh, uh, Dr. Ruto, has promised and confirmed on several occasions that his government is going to have 50% women, which is the highest stake you'll ever get. Mm. We pray that that is realized. Uh, and of course, once the whole process of the court cases yeah. is over, yeah. we'll see that come into play. Yeah. And that is going to elevate the woman. So what women have realized is that, okay, you know what, we can do it. Mm. And we can do it without necessarily having to pat someone's back. The only shortcomings for the women is the financial aspect of it. Because once you get out there into the uh, field, it becomes a social support process, okay. campaign, as opposed to you just going and campaigning and going away. You, uh, because when people look at you, they can easily give you their problems. Your fellow women are telling you, my child hasn't been to school. Mm -hmm. uh, your fellow woman is telling you that, oh, my uh, daughter is sick. Uh, you are meeting a disabled mother whose child has never received the payment uh, from the government, the 3,000 shillings per month for the past three years. So now you become a social support as opposed to using your little funds to campaign. Mm -hmm. And there's not any support for women in terms of funding when it comes to these campaigns. So that is where the disadvantage is, that how do we now propel these women as smart as they are, as brave as they are, and as clever as they are, how do we now support them to make sure that they actually clinch their seats? Uh, congratulations to my fellow women, particularly the governors. Yeah. They did a good job, tremendously good job, because that was very, very competitive. Equally to the member of parliament, the 26 that have been uh, elected, yeah. I would have loved to be one of them, but it wasn't my time quite. Mm -hmm. And so I congratulate my fellow women who have, because those competitive seats, governor, yeah. uh, MP, MCA, they are extremely, extremely competitive. And so you will find that the male counterparts, they tend to pour a lot of money into the campaigns. And they are the ones that caused this, uh, the campaigns to be expensive. Because if the campaigns were not that expensive, we wouldn't be where we are. Mm. Because if they are telling you that you cannot host a meeting mm. until you are able to reimburse the people you are hosting the meeting for. If you see anybody hosting a meeting of 200 people, be sure that the person did not spend them less than 20,000. That is just the bare minimum. So how many meetings of you, those can you sustain throughout the campaign period yeah, for yeah, a lady? Yeah. So it becomes very, very hard. And then at the same time, the also the dimension has shifted yeah. that the voter wants to resonate with you. Yeah. They want to talk to you face to face. So do you do door to door? Yes, you are doing door to door. But the more you do door to door, the more you have to make sure you have something to give for Ugali. Yeah. Because in the city, politics is different from the city in Mashinani. Yeah. Uh, because there, you don't have to give somebody unga ya ugali. Most of them, they have food. Mm. They can be able to fend for themselves. They can be able to listen to you. But in the city, you are talking to somebody who actually doesn't know what they are going to eat tonight. So if you are showing up door to door, they will also say, Na mama So your humanity as the woman and as the mother nature calls it, you will say, okay, May I make sure if I'm going to do my door to door, let me carry even unga ya ugali, let me carry something, let me carry milk for the babies mm. so that at least I'm able to give something back. Mm. So th that is the expense of the process. It is quite expensive. expensive. Where do the women get this money? It is unfathomable because we are looking at the bare minimum 20 million Kenyan shillings to start with. Mm. Where would you get that kind of money? So that process is expensive and that's where a lot of women were shying away. So what can we say? That all the bodies that are preparing the women and supporting women, we don't necessarily ask for the future for funding, but what I would advocate for is to support these women with branded materials. Just support them. If you support them with branded materials, lessos, t-shirts, cups, uh, it will help in terms of them visibility. Because in my case, I did a lot of campaigns, but visibility was poor. Okay. Yeah, because I had to choose where do you put your money? Do you put it on billboards or do you put it on the actual campaigns mm -hmm. to make sure that people actually resonate with you? So it becomes very expensive. Yeah. 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 Uh, if I wish you had time, you would yes. have actually gone 
you know, case by case in yes. terms of the good news that um, mm. we received from the the elections of 2022 regarding mm. the performance of, of women politicians. But mm. I might just, I'll just mention a few because we, there's some, I believe there are lessons that we can draw mm -hmm. from those gains. Mm. You know, for example, if you look at uh, the presidential candidates, the yes. uh, rest for um, the president-elect, Dr. Ruto, I think the others had female running mates. Yes. That's not all. Mm -hmm. uh, we had, uh, in Meru County, we had uh, Kawira Mwangaza. Yes running as an independent candidate and yes. beating the incumbent. Yes, very tough. That's not all. I mean, women really excelled. We go to Nakuru County. Yes. Where we and had... Women, uh, an all-women show. I know. Yes, that is just brilliant. Brilliant. Mm. And then, of course, we have uh, Machakos County. Yes. Uh, called Machakos Girls. Machakos, <laughs> Machakos <laughs> Girls. We find mm. Ovinia, we find mm. Agnes. Mm. Um, Ovinia, of course, being the governor, Agnes yes. being uh, the senator. Yes. And then Joyce Kamene being the, the woman rep. rep yeah. In the same breath, we move down to Bomet County. We meet uh, Lynette Shepkorir. Yes. A apparently, the youngest female parliamentarian in Kenya's history. It's her first job. She it's jumped from job. campus yes. to parliament. And she's a wonderful girl. And we met, yeah, we oh, met you her did. last week. And yeah. she, she's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, there are many. And then there are we many. have, uh, have uh, 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 Migori County where we have Fatuma Mohammed mm -hmm. gave it the third stab. Yes. Woman representative, independent candidate, yes. and she won. A, a, and she also saw, uh, we read in the news, she sold her, her house, claimed she sold her house. Yes. She was crying yes. back then. Yeah. But now, looking at all these, you know, this excites me. I don't know if yes. it's it, it is exciting. <laughs> and this is why I said to you that I'm, I'm not going anywhere. I'm uh -huh. here to stay. Uh -huh. Because uh, what we are seeing is that we have now come out of our shells. We are ready to sacrifice and take the step. Because, you know, they threatened us, they say that, oh, you know, women cannot do this, women cannot venture this far, what are they going to do, where are they going to find the money? But the little sacrifices we make every single day and every single term of elections is getting us better into a better, better level. You can imagine this wonderful fantasy of where we'll have 50% women yeah. governors and 50% male governors, 50% women in parliament without trying to meet the two-thirds gender rule, automatically elected by the people for the people by the time we get there you will be amazed at how the services of this country will change because women we come to perform and all the women that i know elected most of them have been re-elected particularly the members of parliament i know for sure the um, there's uh, Catherine in um, Nakuru County. Mm. She got re-elected. Mm. She did a fantastic job the first time as a member of parliament. Mm. And, and she was elected back. Eve Obara. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So they've been yeah. re-elected based on the performance. Yeah. Because I know for sure the society will be so unforgiving for any woman elected that does not perform. And for that, they will want to teach you a lesson. So when we go in, we actually go in to perform. And we understand the problems of the people. Because we are the people that look after our households. That is where it all starts. So now when you are given a bigger responsibility on a bigger scale, you can only make it better by making sure that you are now inclusive, you are taking care of everybody, you are not being tribal, you are not being a feminist, you are not uh, you know, be, uh, leaving out the boy child and taking care of the girl child. Because as a mother, you must take care of both. So yeah, it is exciting times for Kenya. Uh, I applaud uh, all of us women, a pat on the back for all those who stepped forward, for those who supported the process. Uh, I didn't even mention FIDA. FIDA too has played a key role in ensuring that the women are getting trained and they are getting all the support they need, particularly legal part of it. So we are at an exciting stage right, exactly. and there's better things ahead. Very nice. Yeah. But we cannot run away from the fact that while the rest of us are celebrating, there are other women who yes. are crying foul on this other side, the ones who... Mm. Gave it a shot, but yeah. they did not win. Yes. What do you think are some of the lessons they can draw from these winners in terms of how mm. do they uh, perfect their campaign strategy? How mm. do they ensure that they stay ahead of yeah. uh, of the rest? So uh, yeah, so we have first of all is to equip yourself well with the yeah. training, mm. and that I did because I attended all the programs that I was invited to diligently, and I took in every word to count. And that is why I think the process of my campaigns was a lot easier. However, how do we now prepare in terms of funding? What I've learned is that if you know that now we are going to another five years, mm -hmm. and if you know that you want to run another five years, start now. 
financially start now. Put aside what you can, start garnering friends, start garnering groups of support, because uh, when you start asking for funds, the final year to the elections, it is almost it's a unimaginable. In futility, yeah. It is a battle in futility. Yeah. And then, of course, there was also the COVID effects. Yeah. A lot of women could not get their funding expected. Yeah. Uh, also, some of the political parties were not able to support their candidates, and we were some of them. Mm -hmm. So how do we now go preparing forward? The biggest challenge for the women in terms of campaign is the branded material, which is the visibility. And then the second thing is actually sustaining uh, your media team because you need an active media team sure. and that you must go through it at least for one year progressively so that you can also enhance your visibility. Then you have the other aspect of now the elections day in itself, the nominations day and then the elections day. That is where your money needs to go and how are you able to prepare for that? You can only prepare for it if you have funding. So then there are other things to prepare for that could be unexpected. Uh, like now the agents. Mm. Uh, in this cycle of elections, mm. most political parties let people pay for their own agents. Mm. For women it's tough because your agent, if it's an incumbent, your agent will size you up and they will always have a mall in your group. They will size you up, they will ask how much money is she paying. In the night of the elections they will come and buy most of your agents. So come on the day of the polls, you actually don't have agents to look after your own votes. And that is where everything goes pear-shaped or south yeah. from there. Yeah. So it is that preparation for the agents' day. I uh, want to urge political parties, uh, particularly the uh, most popular ones, to try and support the women candidates on the elections' day with the agent. I would rather they even increase the fees, which is the party nomination fees, yeah to hire mm. so that it can accommodate the payment towards the agents because it's a rigorous exercise, particularly for governor candidates and MP candidates. In my case, I was supposed to have uh, basic 193 agents. Yeah. That is to cover the 29 polling stations yeah. and that is without a break. So if you double up to have two, that means you're having 296. I have to pay for 296 agents and feed them. Averagely, how much does, does that cost? Averagely, that will not cost you less than three million. Because you have to pay and you have to buy food. And that is at the basic paying them 2,000 or 3,000 for the day. So it is hugely expensive. So that is the day that you know, we need to be preparing for adequately, even before you plan anything else, prepare for the day that you have good put aside good money enough to be able to take care of your agents and also to be t able to take care of transportation, logistics, let's say, for, uh, in, in, in its entirety. Yeah. And uh, then the rest, you just do you as a woman. Yeah. Do you as you do best. Yeah. As you run your house, it's the same way you can run this campaign. It works. People will listen to you. And if you visit somewhere two or three times, the next th third time, door to door, they will not ask you for any money. And also have an agenda, campaign on an agenda. Kenyans have woken up to want to listen. I had instances where uh, I would meet a group of youth and somebody would say, no, 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 leave them, they are going to disturb you. They, 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 they might be goons. I'm like, hey. Then they will say, no, 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 mama, we want to listen to you. We don't want your money. And you stop. And they actually listen for me, to me for 10 minutes to hear what I want to do for them as the youth. So we should not disenfranchise the youth. We should not uh, brand them as hooligans okay. because these youth are, youth are our own children. If we don't take care of them adequately, if we don't ensure that they have techniques to attend, if we do not ensure that we are extending uh, funds for them to start small businesses, if we do not ensure that we are creating employment, where are we leaving them? We are disenfranchising them and at the same time calling them hooligans and goons. They are our youth. We need to take care of them. And some of them are highly educated, but they've landed into these situations because of luck. So the leadership styles need to change. And that is why we women are coming in at a full force.
I'm just going through some of the challenges that we ex women experience during this election and um, some of them you've mentioned, you know, like inadequate uh, finance is a, is a big problem. I've interacted with an, a couple of women politicians and that is always at the top. They're looking for funding. Other than that, there was, there was what emerged was also uh, political party support, lack of it. Uh, in the party primaries, women were crying in the toilet. Yes. You know? yes. Mm, the zoning affected the zoning, zoning affected and, and the zoning. negotiated democracy. Mm -hmm. Women were crying in the toilet. Mm -hmm. They had lost resources. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then there was the gender-based violence. Yes. Now there's something that is actually coming up. Gender-based violence, then there's patriarchal structures. People still believe that women cannot lead. They should Absolutely. not be leaders. Absolutely. Yeah. And then now something else that emerged during these elections. Mm -hmm which has been described by many as a digital election, mm. was um, uh, online harassment. <laughs> Tell me That's about it. That's a good one. Tell That's me about one. it. <laughs> yes, all that you've mentioned, mm. uh, those ones were, were experienced. Patriarchal experience yeah. in the different communities of where you come from. Yeah. Uh, the city is not as much. Yeah. Uh, but when it comes to online harassment, even I experienced it. Tell me about where it. Where people just fabricate stories and put the stories up online and you think how the hell did you even conceive this and have the guts to put it across on the platforms and so now you are grappling between going to make sure you are campaigning smoothly in the field and then you come and start checking your groups and you see some really really sleazy comments mm. and um, so i think going forward mm. personally i think they uh, need to uh, raise the bar on punishment on a, what should you call a, on, on like harassment cyber bullying yeah, cyber yeah. bullying yeah. It, they, they need to step the notch higher mm. because women we have come up we are respectful we mm. are mothers mm. and the person actually bringing your name into the mud is old enough to be your son Unfortunately. Unfortunately. Mm. So that is where the society has reached. When they have no level and limit of calling people names. I think they need to raise the bar. I think they need to face the punishment because there is no excuse for that. You cannot sit somewhere on your phone because yeah. you have been paid by my opponent yeah. to come and slate me online for something I have never done. Because, you know, as women in our nature, it really twists you when, when somebody yeah. says something, particularly yeah. when it comes to marital issues, yes. they always attack the marital well, issues. They are attacking the below, below the belt. They always. attack yeah. below the belt. Yeah. And you, in, in your mind, you're thinking, gosh, there's one, one of my staff members saw a comment about me. My staff member was very angry. He said, can I go and face the person? I said, no, you cannot do that. That's not how we work. They will get tired. But why should I keep quiet to let somebody, some young man or some young girl somewhere, mm. slate me? I have a family, mm. I am a mother, mm. I am responsible, mm. I do my thing. Mm. Why do, should somebody use their own disappointments to bring my name down? Mm. So I think those are the kind of things that really need to be dealt with, that we've dealt with now, mm. the harassment, physical harassment. Yes. But that, you know, it's not like it doesn't exist. It mm, is there it's, too. It still exists. I know cases where as women we are trying to, you have a competitor with you, mm. maybe at a platform mm. you want to speak. They don't give you the opportunity to speak because, you know, that's your competitor. So we still have those kind of things. They will go ahead of time. They will go and talk to the people, make sure that you don't speak. It did happen to me, but it did not push me down. I said I'll soldier on. Uh, so there are those hidden um, issues that really need to be tackled and as women we need to get prepared a little bit more mm. but most importantly is also we need to raise the bar mm. in terms of our standards yeah yeah mm. Mm. thank you so much mm. now uh, we're about to finish i yeah. see my director is sending Tired. signals <laughs> this is going i know yeah. but, but Simil, uh, let me ask you mm. In your assessment mm -hmm. of the political environment and the intrigues, mm -hmm. when are we likely to experience a female president in this country? It's not far off. Stock years. Uh, <laughs> in the next 10 years. Will I, will I and you, will we experience her? Yes, we will. Mm -hmm. we will. We will. In my lifetime, there will be a woman president. There will be a woman president. Yeah. 
Yeah. In our lifetime, yeah. there will be a female president. Female president. We've come as far as having deputy presidents. Yeah. That is already a step very far, particularly when you compare in the African continent. It's a step very far. Uh, then now, we just need to elevate it. That now our bar, we need to be independent in how we handle our politics as women. We need to love one another as women. We need to support each other and form a strong umbrella yeah. for women. And we need to know that a woman can lead twice as better as a man can. Yeah. Once we get that movement going, nobody yeah. is going to stop the women. We are more than 50%. <laughs> If we decide our foot down that we are choosing a president woman, yeah. yes, we can. Yeah. So I see it uh, in our lifetime. It's going to happen. Uh, I don't know how, how, which year. I cannot give you that prognosis. But it depends with the women that are sprouting from the yeah. side. And you'll be surprised. It might not even be the ones yeah, that you see on the normal scene yeah, on a daily basis. I agree. It will surprise us. Yeah. So I think we are there. Yeah. When you see the girl of Toto, the mm -hmm. likes of Toto yeah. coming from nowhere with no money and just sweeping the entire bomet and saying, hey, here I am. Yeah. It's not that there were no women against her. There were. But she gave something different that people looked at and resonated with. And that is where we are going with the presidency too. Yeah. As we were going around, a lot of people would say, I, would now, we, I think we are now moving towards women leadership. Yeah. It is time to see how women can lead us. Yeah. So it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Yeah. Uh, any final thing, any parting shots as we wind up? Uh, it's just to encourage my yeah. fellow uh, women yeah. that vied and didn't make it. Please don't lo lose hope. Uh, it was a good shot. We gave it the best we could. Yeah. Uh, it's given us a preparation platform. Now we have a good five years to sit back and plan and not sit back and say, uh, I don't know whether I should try again. Be sure right now so that you can start preparations and planning uh, well in advance. For, to those who have been elected, congratulations from the bottom of my heart. I am proud. I am happy because I know there's a woman representing me somewhere. And, you know, may they serve us respectfully and well in their capacities that they may give an example to more women to come up and also nurture and support other women to join as many positions as we can yeah. for the next elections. Yeah. Yeah. Well said. Thank you yes. so much, Sylvia. Yeah. I have had an amazing time talking to you, mm. looking at the scorecard of the 2022 general mm. elections. Mm. I hope that we can do this more often. Yes, yes, certainly. All right. And of course, thank you so much, uh, our dear viewer, from whichever part of the country where you are watching us from. Thank you for keeping it here. We'd still like to know what the, temperature, the political temperatures are wherever you are watching us from. Are you happy with the election results? Uh, are you ready to work with the newly elected leaders? Please drop a comment. We are available at KTN Home across all socials. You can talk to me also at Queen Tambori. I'm available on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn. Uh, but then, of course, you can also talk to our producer who is available as Grace Waweru, also on social media. Now, uh, I sat down earlier with uh, Kenyan politicians and we are talking about the status of politics pertaining uh, the participation and representation of women in Kenya. This was a program that was done in collaboration with the Voice, Our Voices, Voice of America. Take a look and we hope that we can see you again next week. Empowerment and humanity towards a better world economic and social progress of every society. Facts and information from key players rather than spectators in politics, business, science and technology. City, rural, educated, all underprivileged. We care and we listen to what matters to you. Your voices are our voices. Welcome back. We're bringing you a special edition of Our Voices, co-produced with KTN News on Kenya's elections from Nairobi. Since the 90s, electoral-related sexual violence has existed in Kenya. According to a survey by the UN organizations and Physicians for Human Rights, in 2017, a surge of 201 sexual violence cases were documented by Kenya's National Commission in August only. The Kenya Women Parliamentary Association, also known as Kewopa, also says women have experienced increased violence, both physically and online. The organization worked with Google Kenya to launch a campaign called Eshimudada, a Swahili term for respect a sister. 
to end violence against women in politics in Kenya. They produced a short video and published it online. Let's take a look. Election can be a time of fear and concern for many of us, especially women. The season of political campaigns and elections often sees an increase in political violence against women. Violence against women in politics is a form of violence intended to prevent someone from exercising their political rights just because she's a woman. This includes suppressing one's participation as a candidate, voter, activist, party supporter, observer, election worker, or a public official, just because she is a woman. This type of violence can include emotional abuse, threats, and intimidation, and sometimes physical violence, including sexual violence. We can engage in political competition and still respect one another, regardless of gender, tribe, religion, or political opinion, because we are all human. We are blessed with a beautiful land and nation. We can build our nation together in peace. We need to respect one another because we are all Kenyans. This time, say no to all forms of hate and violence, including violence against women. And say yes to peace and respect. Women have all right to use online platform for their political gains. Heshimu Dada. Heshimu. Dada. Heshimu Dada. Heshimu Dada. Heshimu Dada. Now joining us today to discuss more on electoral related sexual violence and the Heshimu Dada campaign are Honorable Esther Pasaris, who is currently Nairobi County Woman Representative in Kenyan Parliament. She's also a member of Kiwopa. And of course, we have Alex Gakuru, who is Director of Center for Law in Information Technology also known as CLOIT, a technology policy, law, and regulation consultancy firm working on this campaign with Google Kenya. Uh, remember, we're also joined by my co-host and the VOA, Ankandi Miyake Mwakilele. Well, welcome, lady and gentlemen. Thank you, Thank you Thank for joining us. Thank, Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, let's just dive into the this topic of discussion for today. Now, Esther, in your honest opinion, would you say that the electoral politics in Kenya is hostile and a violent place for women and, and how hostile is it? I know you, you are a member of uh, Kewopa. What are some of the reasons that members give in terms of what impedes them from participating in, in you know, the political landscape here in Kenya? And I don't think it's violent only to women, but women feel it more. I think the, we've been trying and struggling with the two-thirds gender bill and it's the only part of the constitution that wasn't implemented. But having said that, uh, for any political party to field the one-third women, they will need women to come forth and say, we want to take part in this exercise. But at the end of the day, when you put them through a nomination process, then there's no way the woman will compete with the men and win. All right. So it becomes very difficult because, you know, you need to have your brand awareness uh, on the ground. You need to have your ability to create town hall meetings or rallies or road shows. It's resources, resources, resources. And then it's also that connection with the voter. You see, I, as an incumbent, have already been connecting with the voter over the last um, five years. So they feel me. So if you're coming in new, unless you come in from a, a, a big establishment where you've done CSR or you come in uh, from an NGO world where you've actually impacted on people so they know you, you know, that brand awareness, um, it's very tough for women. On the series, there's been obviously some landmarks uh, that women and inroads that women in Kenya are making. I mean, yourself being one. And then, of course, you have the, the, the running mate for one of the presidential aspirants being a woman, um, Ms. Martha Karua. How is this, um, do you think this is a positive in terms of now how women could better push for, um, you know, more acknowledgement and also, uh, you know, maybe try and change this whole trajectory around this violence, especially around election time? 
we say that 50% of the voters are women. And if 50% of the voters are women, then we need these women to be able to at least stand with their own. Right now, we have a chief justice for the very first time who's a woman. Martha Karua, who's tried and tested and has run for president before, is a tough lady. She will handle the issues of corruption, which has impacted the society negatively. But I feel that as a government, we should give the women a budget so that they can be felt to reaffirm and reinforce themselves to the grassroots, which is the voter. Because that's the, the problem with our politics is about tokenism. It's about what have you done for me and what have you done for me lately? Another question I do have about that, about women representation, because there's also this expectation from women. When there's a woman in charge, when there's a woman in a high position of leadership, what and how does that translate to in terms of women issues, you know, from healthcare to safety to just general issues, employment, you know, women empowerment? So for me, I think the issues uh, right now for our country are about jobs, are about education, are about water, are about electricity, are about good housing, clean environments, security, affordable medical and medicines in our institutions, maternity. So we believe that having more women, we can articulate some of these issues that are very domesticated. Uh, men don't run the homes. It's women. And the majority of women in Kenya who are running homes are running homes as single parents. We've got a crisis in terms of single parenting. So without the male influence in terms of the running of the home, I feel the male elected leaders are going to be disconnected to the realities and the needs of the women. I'm just going to shift uh, gears a bit uh, to look at uh, election-related violence in Kenya. We have a history, and yeah. not a good one for that matter. And, you know, what happens with the, the coming of the digital uh, uh, migration is the fact that now what was happening, violence that was happening offline, abuse that was happening offline has now moved online and women in politics have faced this. And that is why you kept, you came up, I was very keen to read about this Heshimu Dada. You know, Heshimu Dada loosely translates to uh, respect, respect the lady. What was the inspiration behind it? And uh, um, did you, have you managed to achieve the impact that you were targeting. Yes, uh, the digital transformation has meant a lot in terms of shifting what was offline into online. Mm -hmm. And then um, we felt like uh, there is need to have an intervention. And this intervention was where we would then start looking at what is the underlying problem about women and their participation in the electoral process. When you put a man and a woman together and you tell them to state their remarkableness in their achievements, you find men do it so easily even at the campaign areas, you know, I've built these many roads, you know, I've done all of these, you know, everywhere. We, we are very good at singing our achievements. But when a lady says it and she's aspiring, she's taken as if she is boasting. Uh, it's like uh, she's shameless. It's, it's made to look like she's uncultured. That's how Heshimu Dada was conceived. And so we launched that in March and it's seeking to deal with issues that are specific to women political aspirants. How strong is this impact? of these, uh, especially the attacks against women online, and how much does it really go towards dissuading women participation in positions of you know, importance and prominence? To answer your question, I would refer to European Institute for Gender Equality, a certain publication they published on cyber violence against women and girls. And on it, they say 51% of women and 42% of men aged 15 to 24 hesitate to engage in online debates due to abuse, hate speech, and threats. There are also other sources that actually depict, like the one she has just said, Kenya National Human Rights. So there are independent sources that collaborate that this is a real issue, it's a serious one, and it needs to be uh, uh, addressed. For a lot of women, it's really a decision of whether to participate or not. And, uh, you know, I'm interested in knowing your position, Honorable Passaris, whether was that ever something you personally encountered and did it give you pause? You know, from 2007 to 2017, 10 years, I tried to get into elective pos uh, 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 politics and I encountered violence at various stages. We've been stoned, we've been tear gassed, uh, we've been shot at, you know, we've gone through all that violence. But this is violence post-election. All right. But then there's also the violence that happens because your competitor, they create violence to disperse you and your crowd. And of course, as a woman, you're always having to think, what about my children? What if I get hurt? What if I get raped? You, you're not at peace. I think men have this, this sense, this ego sense that they can handle anything. 
women, our vulnerability comes in the minute we're under attack. So I feel that uh, it takes a lot uh, to come out and it, it become tough. I went to Korogocha once to a school. It was so innocent. I'd gone to a school to celebrate World Food Day. So we were there to plant uh, food, plant uh, fruit trees in the school. And these boys locked the gate. So I had the police there, but the gate was closed. When the gate was closed, I, I said, okay, fine, here. I said, 3,000, let me go. They said, no, that's too little. I said, that's all I have. So we had to push our way. I said to my driver, drive through the gate. I don't care if you damage the car, just drive through the gate. So in the end, the gate was open and we got out of there. Thank you so much, Honorable Esther. Alex, maybe you could just, as we wind up, you could, you could just give us a minute mm -hmm. on probably how women parliamentarians and politicians can work on mitigating electoral violence in this country. Yes, um, they have done much already since uh, we started this collaboration. Uh, our objective is to build resilience for women online. We know some are traumatized by some of the experience that go online because, uh, like Honorable Pasari said, uh, when a woman is being attacked, she is attacked from a sexualized perspective. They don't look from her from the neck upwards. So I think we are looking at ways to build their resilience so that they can withstand and they can sell their political vision equally, equitably and equally to the society and will be happier and a happier country realizing better benefits for development of the entire society. Well, that's all the time we have for the segment. Please share your views on our social media platforms at KTN Home, at KTN News on her standards show. Uh, you can also reach me at Queen Tambori. Special thanks to Honorable Esther Pasaris from Kewopa and of course Alex Lekuru from Cloyd. Uh, it's time for another break. When we come back, we will hit the streets of Nairobi and hear voters' voices on female representation in Kenyan politics. We'll be right back. back you're watching a special edition of our voices co-produced with ktn news on kenya's election our nairobi team hit the street earlier this week to talk to residents in nairobi and ask them what it means for the historic high female participation and what they think on gender parity in kenyan society And foremost, I'll say it's affirmative action, whereby in the, our constitution of 2010, uh, which came up, was, was mainly to support the affirmative action. So you see, when we have a woman in politics, it's actually we're bringing up the affirmative action. When there's no woman in politics, there's no affirmative action. Patriarchy is still a very huge thing in Kenya, where people just don't like women leading, they just want men only. That's one thing. Before you educate Kenyans and you show them the aspect, the importance of having women in politics, you still have a long way. I don't think many Kenyans do understand it. Well, I think it's slowly becoming a, a problem of the past. Yeah. As in, you can see even the candidates, the presidential candidates, two of them, Raila and Rojakoya, both have uh, deputies who are women. And also ministers who are also becoming women. Every county has a woman representative, yeah. they are governors, MPs, senators. I don't think it's really a problem anymore. It's, the world is slowly evolving. Yes, that will change because Martha Karwa, she has been an advocate for a long time for the gender. Uh, and at the same time, she will uh, convince the people that the gender equality must be there. That's all for us this week. On behalf of my Our Voice colleagues and everyone here at The Voice of America and KTN, I'm Oriani Tangishaka from VOA. I am Quinton Bori from KTN News. Thank, Thank you, you for, for watching. watching.